So uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I do really want to thank the planning committee here and uh, Matt in particular. This is my first meeting out uh, since this uh, COVID pandemic. I'll tell you, coming from New York, I walked into the hotel last night and nobody was wearing a mask in the hotel. And I ripped my mask off and I was like, all right, we're back. Just, so Just your mask. Just my mask, I promise. Just my mask. Just my mask. <laughs> I, I got here late enough that, right. uh, yeah, it was okay. Uh, disclosures. Uh, so I will be talking about some products uh, that I uh, do have some disclosures with. I do some consulting for Stryker uh, and have some royalty agreements with Smith and & Nephew, and I will be showing some of their uh, products today. Going to run through templating, uh, implant removal, although I'm just going to gloss over some of this stuff because there are people talking on each of these topics. Uh, bone loss, here's the king of bone loss uh, right beside me, so I'm hopefully not going to embarrass myself. Uh, and then what sli one slide uh, about what to do or what I do with abductor deficiency, uh, and I'll tell you that's still a real problem uh, today. So preoperative planning, everybody knows this. This is just the standard stuff, right? Don't get into the exciting stuff first. Everybody that comes in that needs a revision, one of the things on your mind is infection. So uh, blood work, ESR, CRP, uh, aspiration of their joint, looking at a white cell and uh, white cell count differential and cultures, uh, and then imaging. So I'm going to run through this just using two cases as examples. Uh, this first one, 72-year-old guy, likes to play tennis. Uh, I did his hips about seven years ago. Notice that over the past six months, he's developed some intermittent severe buttock pain. It's the middle of COVID. He lives in New Jersey. He goes and sees the local guy. The guy says, oh, it's your back, uh, and does this to his back because this is what spine guys do. Um, if you look a little more closely at his spine films, he never had any hip x-rays done. That's not where an acetabular component is supposed to be, right? That's a little high. That's a little kind of upside down. Um, so that's his pelvis x-ray, all right? So um, the spine surgery didn't really help him very much. So aspiration of the joint, uh, you know, this is a guy seven years out from an uncemented total hip. This should be just fine. This thing shouldn't come loose. Uh, aspiration of the joint, uh, CT scan. I find CT scans very helpful in these people. Uh, I'm just going to run through some of, these, uh, some of these images so that you can see them. Uh, so on this one, you can see his columns are intact. Right, that's an important part of this. He's got a big hole in there, uh, but his columns are intact. And his acetabulum is just kind of upside down and it's gone up and into his, uh, to his pelvis. So CT scans can be very helpful in terms of uh, deciding where your bone is, what you have to use. Uh, and I'd suggest a CT scan in all of these people. I think it's very helpful. Uh, at our place, we, get, uh, we can get pretty good MRIs of these people as well. Some people will argue you should do this. Some people will argue you shouldn't. Uh, I think if you've got a metal-on-metal -metal articulation or if you're worried about uh, metal debris, an MRI is very helpful to look for a soft tissue tumor. In this case, I'm looking at his abductors. I want to make sure his abductors are intact as well. Uh, and you can see he's got his uh, right hip on the right. You can see the abductor tendon pretty well there. On the left, his abductor is intact and there's no big soft tissue mass. That's what I'm looking for on the CT scan. So if we get into templating quickly, you know, the question is, what are you going to do for this guy? Uh, if you put a hemispherical cup in, this is, the kind of, this is the kind of case that you can probably use a big hemisphere. Uh, he's got a big defect up above it. You're going to have to figure out how to fill that defect. Uh, but his columns are intact. His walls are intact. Uh, this is uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, these days, pretty easy to 3D print a model. Most places can do this from CT scans now. Uh, I find that having these 3D printed uh, CT scans so you can hold in your hand uh, what these things look like is, is really helpful for me for preoperative planning. Uh, and then somebody next to me could probably talk a little bit more about this. I know there's another talk. I think John Vigdorczyk later is talking about bone loss, so I'm just going to skip over this slide. So options in this guy, are you just going to throw a bunch of bone graft up there? Are you going to do a structural bone graft? Are you going to augment? Are you going to make a custom implant for this? I think you could do all of the above in this case. Uh, more and more, we're starting to plan custom implants. Companies are getting better as we can 3D print at making custom implants, putting a porous surface on these custom implants. I think that's the direction more of this stuff will be going over time. Uh, in terms of implant removal, I didn't need it for this guy, but a couple little tricks. If you're trying to get a poly out, drilling through the poly or a self-tapping, self-drilling screw will pop that poly out, and then making sure that you've got uh, uh, acetabular uh, removal instruments, although the acetabular removal instrument in this case was a coker. Um, so 
things don't always go as planned. Uh, this was the middle of COVID. This guy couldn't walk. His daughter was getting married two weeks later and his culture's come back positive. No real surprise that his cultures were coming back positive. He had Staph schlefieri, uh, which is actually a bug found in cats. Um, so we go back to the options you guys talked about yesterday, single stage, two stage, spacer, what are we gonna do? So not for your boards, this is what I did. Um, so uh, he wanted to get up and going really quickly. This is a whole bunch of cement with a whole bunch of antibiotics after a partial implant retention, left his femur in, debrided it, back to sure, washed it out, told him he's gonna need something else, got him up on his feet right away. He's six months out and playing tennis right now, taking 500 milligrams of amoxicillin a day. I'm not sure when this guy's coming back. I've told him he's gonna have to come back. It's gonna happen at some point. Um, so that's what we ended up doing for him for now. Next case, uh, femoral revision. 67 year old, bilateral total hips, presents with thigh pain, normal range of motion. Uh, these are his x-rays, hips are about 20 years old. Uh, and what's notable here on that lateral is that big defect out of the back of his femur. So ESR, CRP, cell count, all normal, culture's negative. Uh, this guy, you get an MRI, you see a big soft tissue mass in the back of his femur. Uh, aspirated that mass, spoke to the radiologist. I was worried that this might be a tumor, it wasn't. Uh, this was just a big osteolytic lesion. If we talk about femoral bone loss, again, another talk, we'll talk a little bit more about femoral bone loss templating, planning for this, bypassing that defect, how far you have to get past the defect, if you're gonna do an osteotomy, which you'll see a talk about in a minute, uh, where you're gonna plan that osteotomy, how long that osteotomy is gonna be, and making sure that you've got all the appropriate instruments available for you. So you've got extraction tools, you've got osteotomes, you've got high-speed burrs, you've got uh, cement removal uh, instruments. You don't wanna get into the operating room and not have the equipment available uh, that you need. So uh, last thing, uh, abductor deficiencies. Uh, this is something you evaluate preoperatively, physical exam, imaging, uh, that if you can get a good MRI of a hip replacement, which some people can, some people can't, uh, you can see these abductors. This is something that you can pretty easily see intraoperatively. Uh, and then when we talk about treatment options, the, there, there are two concerns with abductor insufficiency, right? One is instability of the hip joint, and the two is abductor weakness and an abductor lurch uh, afterwards. In terms of the instability, we're looking at constraint. So are you going to a larger head? Are you going to a dual mobility? Or are you going to uh, constrained liners? Uh, those are your three options. And then soft tissue reconstructions. Uh, there are a couple of different options. None of them are great, right? One of them is doing an IT band tenodesis, maybe gives the hip a little bit more stability. Uh, Leo Whiteside's talked about a G-Max transfer. Uh, he's got a great article with a stepwise version of going through a G-Max transfer. Uh, probably helpful, uh, but again, no great options for abductor deficiencies. Make sure these hips aren't unstable. Thanks very much.